Welcome back to part four. Okay, we're now at the point where I've got to drain the coolant down because now we're going to be dealing with the cooling system hoses and there's many of them. They're hard to get. So I'm going to tell you, um, if you're going to do this repair, be prepared to wait for one. Be prepared to hunt between eBay, Amazon, Rock Auto, Nissan dealerships, and fun fact, if you own an Infiniti, they won't sell you parts for a Nissan engine. Nice. The Nissan dealership says no. Call Infinity. Even though it says Nissan on the thing, clearly a Nissan engine. So you know what we do? What? We stick it to the man. How do you do that? Give him a VIN number off a 2001 Pathfinder. <laughs> Getting back to job at hand, we're going to meet you down below and show you what you got to do to drain the radiator. At some point, we are going to replace the radiator. It won't be in this series. It'll be in a different series. But uh, no, one of those things, you're going to have to replace the radiator in these once in the life of the vehicle. All right, see you down below. All right, after you remove that annoying cover, mine's in such bad shape, it was pathetic to record. So, but anyway, once the cover's off, got a screw down here to undo. This radiator's trash, so I'm not going to worry about it sucking the rest of the fluid out of the reserve, because that we're going to clean too. So we're going to just keep the cap on and force it to suck the fluid out. It's not going to be messy. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, that's some, uh, some green fluid. Uh oh, I think I might have to actually call Nissan for that. Ah, uh, what? Because that's Nissan green. What do you mean? That ain't Prestone, baby. Oh no. That's Shrek's piss right there. <laughs> you can shine a light through it. Yeah, that's green. Yikes. Uh oh. Well. Man, it's really trying to shoot down. Well, I don't have. Yeah, it would be faster if I had the um, radiator cap off, but I want it to suck the reserve tank out because that's dirty. Uh huh. But that's definitely Nissan green. Well, I need to get another camera to show this. Yeah, you do. Here, let me go get it. Yeah, that's a green I've never seen before. Yeah, I know. It's so green, dude. I've never seen a car piss that much. Well, I mean, I've seen green. Green would be Prestone, but that ain't Prestone. That's Nissan. Yeah, so what does that mean? Uh, I mean specialty coolant right there. Is oh, really? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Nope. Hey, right, welcome back to the cooling system side of this repair of the QX4, the 3.5 liter VQ35DE. If you're having an overheating concern and you've replaced the front thermostat, well, I hate to tell you this, there's one in the back. And the way that the cooling system is in the 3.5 is everything is external except for this one internal pipe. Pretty much from here, once the thermostat opens, starts flowing coolant down into the block. And they do that to get this thing up to temperature so we get up to emissions temp real quick. The problem you're going to find is this thermostat 6, it's going to overheat. The front one sticks probably going to underheat because that's on suction. This is on the pressure side or the hot side as we call it. And the reality is at the end of the day, you know, this thermostat's only going to last for so long. So what I'm going to recommend is make sure you get the uh, Beck Arnold thermostat. Or Beck Arley. Bar ba ba Beck, Beck Arnley? Yeah, this one's rated 203, so it's 203 in the back, 170 on the cold side. So hot side, cold side, two thermostats. Some of these cars are coming out with dual thermostats. Kind of blows me away. But there's the uh, part number for what we're putting in. Put in premium parts. Do not cheap out on this. Do not put a cheap Murray in or Napa Select Special. Spend the money. Yeah, I know it sucks and it's kind of expensive, but <laughs> what's more expensive? Put an engine in, you do all this work, tear it down, and it overheats on you. <laughs> Or the worst part is, is like you don't have a running QX4. You just you just blew up your wife's car. That's no good. All right, it's 12 mil to get it off. And I am using a swivel socket on this. Now, if you're wondering what the sensor is in the center, that is the knock sensor. And if it goes bad, guess what? This whole intake's got to come off. Guys, no, is it bad yet? Nope, I don't see any cracks, so we're going to roll the dice and leave it. They typically don't go out unless you've had an overheating problem or um, age. But this one, 
looks like it's good. I didn't have no codes. I actually had pretty decent trim numbers. It was adding about six, so I know I had a little bit of an air leak. Goal is to always have it run zero zero on fill trims, but if you have plus five, plus six, you know, that's okay too. Now, sometimes these can be a little difficult to uh, pop open. Basically, grab this hose here, lift up. And that's another thing. Um, this hose, if you're going to do a thermostat job and go in this deep, replace this hose. I actually have the Nissan part number. 14055-4P110. I actually had to get this from Texas. Yeah, you're not going to go to O'Reilly's and get this molded hose. And if you put one in and you kink it, like I've seen people do, you're just defeating the purpose of the cooling system and you will overheat it. It may not show up on the gauge, but you won't have longevity as this engine is well known for. Okay, so now, before I take the thermostat out, I'm actually going to pull the hose down here. I'm going to pull this whole thing up as one piece. You can see that hose. You can see how it collapsed. That shouldn't happen. And let's see what tool I'm going to use for that. Save my fingers. We'll see if the everything but pliers will do it. Kevin's favorite tool. And don't go and put in hose clamps here. Think about this. Hose clamp gets loose. You're going to have to tear this all apart. I have another tool I could use for this, but I don't think, I think it's a little too wide for this job. Trying to figure out the best angle of attack on this job. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Another hose that don't want to come up. Well, being we know we have a hose, we're gonna cut this one. Oh, that's sick. And you cut it. No special. Yeah, no sense in fighting and fussing with it. You're always cutting them. So we're gonna have to wait another two weeks for this? Nope! <laughs> oh, I ordered it on Friday, and how it got oh. from Texas to us in three days. Amazon? I don't know. This was eBay. Oh! <laughs> yeah, this was eBay. Top premium. Oh, yeah, you can see where the hose is rotted. Let's see. Ooh! Nice, that thing looks tight and bl bludgeoned. Yeah, well, we got another problem. Right. The ceiling surface here has actual... Let me see. has dirt on it. Alright, time to get out the old 1500 grit paper and a little bit of WD-40 to clean that up. <laughs> Typical. Yep. I didn't think I was going to see some hose rot there. I'm glad I'm replacing it. <laughs> yeah, imagine if you wait another year. Everything would be gone. <laughs> oh, yeah, cost to have cooling system problems. No thank you. Alright, so I took a little WD-40 and some wet sandpaper. And we're just going to clean up the surface here. Now I'm using 1500 grit. Do not, do not use anything below 1000. And the reason being, we just want to clean a little bit of hose rod off, but we do not want to gouge this hose ceiling surface. And luckily this isn't bad. Had it been 200,000 miles, eh, it could have seen it be a lot worse. See how quickly it cleaned up with the 1500 grit? I'll have to take a mirror and look behind it. Alright, we're going to use a very conservative amount of brake cleaner here. I wouldn't suggest getting any in the cooling system. You gotta remember, everything is exposed right now. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have guessed. <laughs> I'm missing about half the engine. 
Uh, that's why we use brake cleaner because it dissipates. By the time we get this done, there won't be any brake cleaner to speak of. Okay, now I need to take a mirror and look behind. Alright, that looks good. We'll move on to the next part. Now let's get that big old thermostat out now. Before you take this out, note the direction of yours and how it's clocked. What? What? What's going on? Look at that. What? Let me see. What am I looking at? What am I looking at? What? What is that? What is that? I can tell you. Is that grime? No, it feels kind of rubbery. Uh. Feels like a bad oyster. <laughs> Oof. What? Huh. Yeah, that's kind of weird. That, that's kind of gross, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as I was saying, note the clocking of the location here. Okay, if it's this way, you put the new one back in that way. You don't want to change the direction because the flow happens on each side of this. And if you put it this way, you're going to inhibit flow back into the engine. You don't want to do that. So whichever way it is, put it back in the way you found it. Oh, uh-huh. You might be right. <laughs> you put it back there, huh? <laughs> All right, there you go. Now, in the book, it tells you just throw it in hot water and test it. What? Yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> 203. I don't mind 203. I just don't like engines running like 220 degrees. It's ridiculous. All right, so uh, clean up your housing. Now, being that this is aluminum on aluminum, there really should not be any pitting there. If you have pitting there, it's because you probably put, uh, you know what you probably did if you got pitting? Huh. You threw in tap water. <laughs> huh? Yes, people use tap water. For what? Cooling systems. It's low on coolant. Just grab the garden hose. You know how many guys argue with me and say, You can use garden water? Well, yeah, you can to get home. I'll give you that. You I need to get, get home. home. It's 12 o'clock at night. You need to get home. The old lady's busting your balls. You had a little too many beers, and all of a sudden, your, your, your coolant's low. All right. Well, you can pee in it, or you can put water in it. Get home. But mind you, once you get home, you got to service that cooling system. Ah, uh, dude, people are stupid. Don't do that. I won't tell you things I did to used to get home when I was hanging out with the ladies. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. pee on it. Yeah. One time we got a muffler fall off. Had a girl with double Ds, and we used her bra to hold up the muffler. Oh. We got home. We ran out of coolant. Yeah. Had to run into a Safeway and start pouring water through. So that, and guess what happened a month later? Uh -huh. Blew the head gaskets. Oh, God. We don't use garden water, sink water. We use the correct coolant. Yeah. All right. Off with the rant. Anyway, back to business. Clean up your housing. Oh, now, I'm not going to use any sealants here. I'm just going to drop the new thermostat in. Which side? Which way? Well, being it was faced pretty much center space of the engine. The other cool thing I've noticed with the thermostat, it has a little tiny bleed hole. I see, that. see that little tiny hole right there? That means it'll make it easy to bleed this engine out, so we don't have to sit there and fuss with it. We'll still have to fuss with it, just not as long. Uh-huh. All right, here we go. Back in. Back in. Oh, boy. And you'll notice now we have a rib. A rib? Yeah. See, when we pulled up the old thermostat, it was flat. But see, now we have a ceiling oh, rib. Oh, yeah. The, the... Yeah, so when we put the hose back on and, and actually push it down, we'll have a complete seal. All right, now we're going to do the hose assembly. See how easy it is with pliers? Don't put a hose clamps here. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, you, you will regret it. You'll have a coolant leak and you're going to hate life. All right, notice the direction of the hose. It points down in the center. Don't put the hose up when you put your new one in. All right, let's get the clamp off. Be very careful when doing this because these clamps will bite your fingers. Ask me how I know. How you know? Because I've bit my fingers before. 
Ooh. Okay, so we're going to keep these separated. Let me see. So that's for the bottom towards the engine. That's top towards the thermostat. Mm -hmm. Now let's see if this will come off easy. Didn't think you were going to get it off that easy, eh? No. Nope. Yeah. One thing I didn't notice, look at that. What? It was cut. Oh, yeah, see? I told you. Yep. So this would have been a blowout waiting to happen. Nice. Can you imagine? Get us back to the wife a week later. Why is it overheating? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh, there's a cut through though. Maybe I should replace that one hose. That was only eight dollars fifty seven cents. <laughs> no, I can't do that. It's too too much, too expensive. Gotta cut it more. Yeah, we gotta be careful because we don't want to cut the ceiling surface. Mm -hmm. Wow, mm. this one was This is what the back side of the engine might look like. See right there? That's mm -hmm. the seat point. Another 10,000 miles, it either would have blown or would have leaked. Mm. One or the other. All right, let's uh, give it a little bit more wet sand. Don't need very much. A little goes a long way. So I'm trying to teach cab. A little goes a long way. If you have a little bit of color discoloration, that's okay. I'm not worried about that. What we don't want is we don't want any speed bumps. Speed bumps are bad. Looks like we got a little bit right there to work with. All right, this one has a little gunk on the inside. Camera probably ain't gonna pick it up right there from whatever sloppy mess that thing was having in there but make mm. sure you get that clean too Let's see. right there yeah so we'll take some brake cleaner brake cleaner there it is oh get it away I can see in there too where the coolant was starting to get discoloration. Right. If you can see that the brown discoloration in there. I want to get that out too. So you got a little bit of sucking, a little bit of mucky muck in there. Get a little bit more creative. New hose on. Now you'll notice there's an arrow to arrow. So they make it easy so you don't put it on the wrong way. Make sure it goes all the way down. And we'll grab our first clamp. Ooh. What? Seriously, this is about to die? Ugh. Cameras. It has one bar on it. Alright, so here's the nipple edge. You want to come just a little bit behind it. And make sure that this is pointed down. And what I'm going to do, we're going to do everything like the factory did. They had it pointed down right in the center. Alright, so there's the nipple edge. 
right there and right in the center of it and that'll be good okay now to the one that I don't like now what we're going to do is we're going to run this up It's one of those things where I'm not going to be able to. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pick this hose up slightly. Perfect. You got it? Yep. Yep, just like the factory had it, that's the way you need to put it back in. All right, before I cinch that down, I'm actually going to put the thermostat bolts back in. We're going to use a little bit of blue Loctite. You don't need a lot of this stuff. Okay. Brakes work? Yep. <laughs> Do you guys have to put new brake drums on it? Yep, we had to rebuild the back brakes again. Oh, aren't those always ones getting abused? Not normally. Normally it's two pad changes to the front, the one in the back. And this time, we blew up the back before we blew up the front. Yeah, because it looks like the whole cylinder was gone. Yeah, something bad happened back there. Pad, cylinder, the ventilated reverse, the ventilated port, everything. Yeah, those drums aren't ventilated. Well, not the non vent Yeah, the brake, the brake, the, the thing is itself. All right, setting this O ring. Just a couple turns here, a couple turns there. Because that O ring has to stretch a little bit. I've noticed. <laughs> Let's hope there's no overheating now. Awfully really hot. Yeah, but it actually is running kind of cold. What? It's running cold. Really? Yeah. Funny because every time I touch this thing, it's hot. Well, the engine was hot. The running cold is like anything below 200 degrees. That's running cold. Oh boy. Well, yeah, 170 degrees. This thing gets terrible gas mileage, burns oil, does all sorts of goofy things. Yeah. That's why it's a car that was really literally made. Where did you guys get this in? Alright, we're just going to go a quarter past turn and call it good. Quarter past turn. Call it good. Kevin usually likes to go over. Yeah, he does. Let's turn between technicians and mechanics. <laughs> he's got to check his, his, uh, his work. I don't know about torque specs, but I'm going to guess it was probably about 15 to 22 foot pounds. Fortunately, oh, the literature on this is all over the place. What?